Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Faith and Fandom Podcast. This is the Artist's Alley Aftermath Edition for Captain's Comic Expo 2022. And today I'm also joined with my daughter, Bella. Hi. Uh, she is 11, going on 12, and she was my sidekick for uh, this weekend's trip to Charleston, South Carolina for Captain's Comics Expo. And um, it was an adventure. All the adventures were had. A lot of great stuff about the con. We'll jump into that in a moment. But uh, Bella, not just the con, but the whole experience. What was, if you had one favorite moment for the whole journey what was your favorite thing probably seeing the pineapple fountain so if you've ever uh been to charleston south carolina there's in the waterfront park in the battery area of downtown charleston there's a giant pineapple water fountain or not like a water fountain you drink out of but like a you know a park fountain um and there's photos on my personal facebook and instagram um not of the pineapple fountain on the um that one but uh so yeah, what uh, what was your favorite con experience? Probably the cosplay display that they did. Oh, today. on Sunday afternoon, yeah. So that was pretty dope. So um, I've been to Captain's Comic Expo before as a just like attending, um, but that was like way back in the early, just kind of getting started, Faith and Fandom days. Um, uh, maybe even. Yeah, it was early days. Um, I've never vended there before. It was just one of those things that I had so many other weekend shows that I had to commit to that I couldn't afford another weekend. But I've been wanting to do Captains for a while now. Heard a lot of good things. And then this past, whenever Michael Watkins got married, um, I was actually at the table for dinner with... Uh, the guy who is the owner and founder of Captain's Comic Expo. And just after talking to him, I really wanted to, like, he, he was just super encouraging just as a person to talk to. And I really wanted to do his show after talking to him. So signed up for it and uh, made that plan. And so it legit was the first time even really putting boots to the ground for that. But one of my favorite parts of Charleston, South Carolina in general is, uh, the fact that there's this giant bridge that runs from Charleston to Mount Pleasant, which is where the con was. And it's this, it's a gorgeous bridge. It's like one of the iconic spots in Charleston, South Carolina. It's a two and a half mile bridge. And my entire time, I've ever since the first time I went to Charleston, I wanted to walk this thing because I saw that as part of its structure, there's an entire sectioned off lane for people to actually just walk this enormous bridge. And um, so <laughs> once I told Bella that, or asked Bella to come with me, told, asked, voluntold, somewhere in the middle. Um, once I asked Bella to go, I said, hey, by the way, we're going to walk across a giant, massive bridge. Um, from what you expected to what you saw, was it like, was it better, worse? What were you thinking? It was better once we got on there, but it was basically what i expected yeah was it terrifying was it fun what was it in between in between um i gotta admit there was a couple points like looking down and everything it was like oh this is kind of scary the distance was never bad that first few steps actually getting up like as the incline starts but man it's just a really neat thing and if it if you've ever been there to where the expo is you the bridge that rustles on there don't touch the blanket um if you've ever been to where the expo is, you can literally start the bridge walk right at the hotel beside the con. So we parked our car, we got to Charleston, parked our car, and immediately went out and did that before we even unloaded the car. And it was it's two and a half mile walk, and uh, we went the length of the bridge, but we didn't go all the way into the city. Um, and then we turned around and came back. So it was probably, what we put in was probably about four and a half miles. Um but we did that, and you know, we were completely windblown. Our hair looked like, you know, Beekman's World, if you ever remember that, um, or a bad troll doll. Um, but honestly, the fact that this walking bridge is right where the con is, is to me one of the coolest things, is that it's literally right there. You can walk out of the con and then walk over one of the most iconic images and scenes in the whole area. So just as far as location goes, that's gangster. 
And then I guess when I'd went there before, it didn't register with me that there is a masterpiece of a golf course in front of the expo. I didn't play golf until two years ago. And so now it's just like, oh, hey, there's a beautiful golf course right here. And I was kind of upset I didn't bring my golf clubs. But there wouldn't have been a lot of time or if there would have, it would have just kind of taken away from what we were doing. But no, no points for next time going back. Absolutely going to see if I can afford to do that. Um, so setting up, it's, you know, it's your kind of standard setup, big room, giant stage in the middle of the room. I was in the back corner and, uh, it's just so happened that, uh, my booth was beside Michael Watkins, who, uh, I haven't had a booth beside him since 2015, um, which is kind of crazy. So, uh, our booths were beside each other. We didn't see each other cause our like back corners were each other and they're, you know, we were kind of wedged in there, but, uh, so Bella, outside of our booth, what was the booth that you spent the most time at or that you enjoyed the most at the show? The one right across from us with all the music boxes and the keychains and necklaces and yeah, there, there's a booth right across from us that had anime flags, lightsabers, uh, a ton of necklaces, and they, they literally had the most variety of any booth, and they were massive, and they did a really good job from it. Right across, beside them were some of our friends that do uh, the fandom metal works. They do some really impressive metal signs. Um, then t- directly to our left were three Power Rangers, um, which you could... Uh, kind of set your watch to hear it's morphin time like it was like pretty frequent um, because I guess they did that for videos or pictures or stuff like that which was you know it was fun no complaints um, but I know that uh, the there is a production company that was beside Michael they're the guys that do um, uh, Vice Principals Righteous Gemstones uh, and uh, Eastbound and Down um, and they were, they were getting kind of tired of hearing it's morphin' time, which that also just kind of made me giggle. So, um, uh, that was fun. And then our friend, uh, Karen, uh, Whitfield, who is, uh, um, Batgirl, and we've talked about her a few times, uh, we kind of got given some love and credit for actually introducing her to this show, which was nice, um, so we're, we're excited just to see some familiar faces throughout the place, um, our favorite dice dude was there and I managed to get some new dice to be able to play, to give kids Pokemon cards away, which was really fun, which is, um, this time I had cards from, uh, GameStop in Lumberton and Dragon's Lair in Fayetteville that both gave me a massive amount of Pokemon cards and they would roll a D20 and whatever amount of cards they got at the, on the D20 was how many cards they got, unless they rolled like a four and then we like made them re-roll, um, Bella, was there anything surprising or that just caught you off guard while you were there? I don't think so. It was mostly the average stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you've been around cons. Well, I've been doing cons as a vendor since 2014, and that would have made you, like, four when we started this. Um, right? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So that you've been you've been around cons longer than you've been able to read. So that's a long time. Um, so you've you've seen all that. So it takes a lot to actually like surprise you in terms of you know people being there. But we had a there's one of the artists who does the Muppet stuff. There was some Disney artists. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. And the cosplayers were really impressive. Um, did you? Who were your favorite like cosplays that you saw? Um, there were four people as a group cosplay from League of Legends. They just did a good job. And the female Doc Ock. Yeah, there was a female Doc Ock today. Not the Spider-Verse Doc Ock, but still a female Doc Ock. There was a little cute little boy Doc Ock. And you can see some of our, these cosplay photos on the Facebook and Instagram. Um, there's a little dude Doc cosplay, a little boy cosplaying as Doc Ock. And um, I gave him some Pokemon cards and he had a shopping bag. And when people are taking his photo, they said, put your bag away. He's like, no, it's my loot. <laughs> and like he was robbing places. So he didn't want to put his bag away. So I thought it was pretty cute. Um, and there were, uh, there was just some impressive cosplayers. Uh, just looking through some of these, uh, that we saw, there was, uh, 
a Mojo Jojo who was genuinely a little, it was super well done, but a little creepy. Um, there's a Moaning Myrtle. You don't see a lot of Moaning Myrtles around. Um, she was impressive. Um, one of my favorites was there is a squad of uh, My Little Pony cosplayers, and there was a dude who was a Spike, the dragon, and I was actually really impressed with the Spike. Um, actually, everybody was really well done in terms of actually embodying the character, so that was nice. Um, and uh, there was a Cobb Vant from Star Wars, which I got excited about. And, like, the dude's face, when I said, Dude, are you Cobb Vant? He, like, was trying to, like, not look like he was going to giggle, too, because he was excited that somebody recognized him. I guess it took a minute. Um, Because it was just a red shirt with a a little neckerchief and a belt. But, like, he he did a really good job with that. Um, Would you say that the most cosplay, the most frequent cosplay you saw was Demon Slayer? Yes. There were, like, 43 million Nezcos. Um... Which is fine. There was a really cool uh, female Titan uh, that was there. I thought she was pretty impressive. Um, this was my first Encanto cosplay I saw. Um, there was a Dolores there. There was also a little girl as Mirabelle for the cosplay. Okay, I didn't see that. So, you know, uh, one of the funny things for me, Dolores's power, her gift, is super hearing, right? Right. Okay. So, um, uh, Dolores walked by my booth. Uh, you weren't. You were off getting butterbeer. Um, Dolores walked by my booth, and I said, "Dolores," and like she just kept going. So her friends literally grabbed her and dragged her back to the booth. Uh, so she totally didn't hear me at like three feet away, which you know just kind of goes against her superpower. Um, but then I said, "Can I get your photo?" And she's like, "Can you have my phone number?" And I'm like, "No." can I take your photo? And I had to do the like little motion photo thing. And she's like, and so there's this, like, I don't know, looking at this girl's picture, she probably looks like 19 to me. I don't know. I'm not great at ages, but she was super young. And so this weird hobbit looking man is asking for some girl's phone number. I was like, no, your photo. And like, so after she's like awkward, done being like weirded out, she's like, Oh, can I do the ear thing? I was like, yes, please. I was just a bit, it just cracks me up that somebody that their power is, super hearing it was like that bad of a conversation just with the dialogue but her she was a dolores was super great there was lots of black widows surprisingly you did shy guy and you did a really great job with that um so you said that was one of your bucket list things right to have somebody take your photo and cosplay so how many photos do you think you took because you only wore it for like 20 minutes total the whole time probably maybe an hour i don't really know how long so how many photos do you think you got I know two people asked to take a photo with me. Yeah. So. And so that's really cool. So I know that's what, you know, a good experience for you. That was fun. Um, there was a Hal and um, Sophie cosplay. It was pretty dope. Um, there's a mushroom girl, and I don't know what she's from personally, but she did a great job. Um, there was some doctors. There was a ton of Harleys, of all, ver- all varieties of Harleys. Um, those are some really cool ones. And then uh, today as well... Uh, or some others. There's a Captain Carter. So that was the first what if Captain Carter I've seen. I've seen like before what if was a thing. I saw a lady dressed like Captain Carter. Like she made it up herself. And then it ended up on what if. So that was cool. Um, yeah. And there's some. There's a ton of Lokis too. And there's probably like five Lady Dimitrescs from uh, Resident Evil Village. So in, in this one environment, there was, you know, a very decent uh, variety of cosplay. Um, I didn't see the cosplay contest. Was there any other cool ones you think I missed? Um, I don't think so. I saw most of those people walk by you. Yeah. So there, there was a really good variety with that. And um, so we, yeah, we, we did the bridge walk. We, we enjoyed a lot of the cosplay. Um, we had some really dope food while we were there um we ate at a place called grace and grits um which was super bougie but also ridiculously delicious um and we saw darius rucker just hanging out at the restaurant so that was fun um and then uh for breakfast we ate at vicious biscuit um which was again a little bougie but also just delicious and i had i had way too much spicy food like to be sitting at a con, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and so that was really good. But they also had some food trucks at the con that had like 
paninis and um, brisket. brisket, you know, because you can get brisket at a con. Um, and truck. Yeah, and so that's pretty neat. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff with that there as well. Um, there's one of those places that had the metal cups where you get your drink refills and you know i've got i've got like a dozen of these metal cups from, and they're all different companies so none of them really transfer and all that but uh one of the cool things was that this place had butterbeer and you know if it was another soda i wouldn't have cared as much but i do love me some butterbeer and the fact that they had this much butterbeer around was i thought was pretty great um and so that was that was a good thing did you buy anything no what did you want to buy? What was the one thing that you would have bought if I, if we, like, by the way, you didn't actually ask me to buy you anything, right? Just so, yeah, I didn't, you didn't ask me to buy you anything, but, you know, if you would have asked me, what would have been the one thing you would have wanted? The music box. Yeah, the, the booth across from us had a ton of cool music boxes. The Harry Potter one. The Harry Potter one? Okay. So, um, the Harry Potter music box would have been your choice. There, there's a lot of neat stuff. Um, I bought a Valentine's Ahsoka. It's an Ahsoka. I need a th- all the things. Um, and it's on our Star Wars shelf already now. Um, I also bought a cool Toph painting. And I put that in y'all's playroom. Um, on the shelf behind the little office one goes. Um, but there was just a really cool uh, Toph painting. Um, and I asked her if she ever made the That's Rough Buddy uh, thing. And she said that she actually just did a show last week with Zuko. Um, so that was pretty fun. Um so overall, it's good experience as far as that we did the we did the waterfront walk and we parked way too early and ended up walking like six miles instead of like a block. Um, and so I I personally walked at least eleven miles this weekend, which was great considering we spend most of the time sitting on our butts. Um, you so you didn't have a lot of conversations with people at the booth, did you? Like when people. Were, you didn't talk to a lot of people that like came to the table. No, because they basically just walked away immediately. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you were by yourself, but uh, even when you were there, like, so this was you probably the first time in a long time you've watched me that long, actually just interacting with people and talking with people. Um, what are some things that you saw that maybe stood out to you or positive, negative, anything like that? Like, is there anything like in, any interactions that really stood out to you? Um. I don't know what his name was, but it was the guy who was talking to you about, you talked to him about Jessica Jones for a while, and you just Mm -hmm. talked to him for about 15 minutes. It was just... Well, and that was the 15 minutes you got there. Um, So there was a dude named Alston, like Austin with an L, and um, he was there with a young lady named April, and um, they... uh, we talked about Doctor Who and faith and uh, representation and screenwriting and uh, like salt and light and like just being present. And I mean, there's there's just a lot of really great conversation. We talked for at least 45 minutes, like straight through. Um, and, you know, it was a point in time where, uh, in the middle of the conversation, Michael Watkins and his wife, April, were talking about how John Barrowman, Captain Jack Harkness, will grab your butt if you take a photo op with him. I mean, the conversations went all over the place. Um, but one of the things we just, we, he and I had a genuine, really good conversation about, um, the writing on Doctor Who, the problematic to the really good. We talked about which characters work and different things like that, about how important the episode with Rosa Parks and Emmett Till was um, to not only Doctor Who, but across the board. And actually somewhere in Faith and Fandom Book 8, because it all blended, it's all blending together in my mind right now and the book's not done done. But like there's actually a whole episode, a whole chapter about that stuff in there as well. Um what it was it was just such a really great conversation it was just one of those that like as we were as i was sitting there it was this is why i'm here um conversations like that i had today with austin were why i was there there's also a a dude named jeff who volunteers for the con and he was incredibly encouraged that i was there um coming from somebody who helps run the show that that's him right there on the screen by the way that's uh he if you look if you see a dude with like a 
a head covering and an orange t-shirt in our photos. That's him. But uh, he uh, he was incredibly encouraged by what we're doing and why we're there. And he just blessed the crap out of me. So Austin and Jeff were some of my best conversations today. Um, and we also had, you know, plenty of the the negatives of people, like, not just disinterested, but people, like, making, like, mocking gestures and faces and, like... And pulling the kids away. And pulling... There was one lady that read the Bible verse on the Batman shirt and literally yanked her kid away from my booth like she was pulling him out of traffic. So... That was, you know, that that does get discouraging, and I was literally texting a friend in the middle of it, and so I just had a really negative interaction and texted a friend that I did, and then Jeff came up and gave me one of my best interactions. I was like, oh, never mind, but it's it's a lot of highs and lows when you're trying to be in this, but, you know, I had some really, really good conversations yesterday and today. Um, one of them actually stemmed from Ahsoka, and this is another time you were ro- roaming around. There's a lady in an Ahsoka shirt. And it was a cool Ahsoka shirt I'd never seen before. And she came by and she was just looking, but she didn't really seem interested in the spiritual end of things. So I didn't push it. I didn't be like, hey, by the way, I've got an Ahsoka Bible study. I didn't do that. Um, but then she walked away and um, I was like, man, I really feel like I should have talked to that lady about the Ahsoka Bible study. And, like, I was literally looking for her to walk by again so I could tell her. And then she walked over to the metal sign guy. And when she walked by, she literally turned around. And that's when she first read the Faith and Fandom banner at the bottom. And she's like, Faith and Fandom? Oh, I didn't realize this is a Jesus. I was like, and yeah. And I was like, I was actually going to tell you there's a circle. And she came back over. And she and her sidekick that were with her... um, we went to this whole long discussion about Ahsoka, but not just that, about church hurt, about how... Um, and so <laughs> this lady did a really good job of explaining Ahsoka's entire storyline like in about two minutes. And she said, I'm going to tell you the short version. I'm like, ooh, I can't wait um, <laughs> to see how she did. And she did a really great job. But talking about the fact that about Ahsoka got kicked out of the Jedi Order and how a lot of that really paralleled to what was actually happening in that lady's life right then. So... Some of those conversations, as well as some other people that were getting our stuff to use for ministry, um, in terms of like, I haven't looked at money or anything or any, like with that, but it was a really good show in terms of people actually interacting, uh, taking stuff, uh, and being able just to tell people you can get all of the chapters on the website now is good. You know, it's like it. You know, I don't really care if stuff sells, but if people are actually interested, they can get it if they want it today. Or if they want to be able to access that stuff. So that's pretty neat. Um, Did you have any encouraging stuff or or any interactions other than that guy that you thought were important? No, I don't think so. Okay. That's cool if you don't. That's fine. Um, What was, was there anything encouraging to you sitting through all this? Like... I was half asleep when I was sitting over there, so I wasn't really <laughs> watching the whole time. You also played, like, a metric ton of Pokemon Arceus um, today, too. Like, yeah, you, you got really far today. Um, but it was one of those things, it was just really good interactions overall, and um grateful to have been a part of it. Um, so if I have the opportunity, I would absolutely um, do Captain's Comics Expo again. Um would you want to go back to that show? Yeah, probably. Okay. It was fun. For the show or for Charleston? <laughs> Charleston. Charleston, okay. Yeah, she she was really in love with the city. She didn't want to leave, um, which it's a nice city. We just could never afford to. <laughs> she said, so tell, tell, tell about the cobblestone. What do you mean? Like- so, like... One of your goals was that you you didn't think that like rich places like that existed. You just thought they were for movies and stuff, and so you didn't think there were places that still had like cobblestone in the streets and like the golden lion door knockers, golden lion door knockers and stuff like that. So one of the things is once and the we gaslit candles, gaslit yeah the lanterns and stuff. Once we start going down there, she's like, I didn't think these places were real. And, like, she's like, can I walk on cobblestone? And so, like, we, we it was just this whole little detour of walking on cobblestone and um, going through that stuff. So, but it was just, you know, we, we could never live in a city 
uh, of actual Charleston. I wouldn't really necessarily want to either, just for touristy stuff. Um, so I'll say this. It was a really encouraging, like, even for just, like, the three conversations I mentioned, um, it was worth being down there. But past that, there was a lot of other conversations that went on throughout the whole weekend that were just really encouraging, not to mention actually getting to be encouraging to some other vendors and artists. And I, I just I had a really good time with it. And uh, I'm not going to get to do as many shows this year as I would like, just because shows are just kind of still getting back together. But also, I've got to take two months off for Wizard of Oz. Um, so that's going to be its own adventure. But uh, I'm grateful that this could be one of the shows that I could do. Um, so we had, uh, our new comic book, uh, for the first time ever. Um, so that was neat. Um, outside of having our new comic book, we also, um, had book seven in hardback was the first time in South Carolina. Well, maybe, I think it might've been in Florence. This is the first time we had a booth set up with the new hardback. Uh, this is the first time we had the, um, video game controller candle, and we also had a bunch of new stickers with that as too. Um, so just a lot of cool new stuff with the booth with that. Um, but one thing I wanted to say about the booth is that this was the first time, uh, you know, we started a Patreon at the behest of um, some of our friends once the pandemic hit. And um, like when we weren't doing cons, we had a friend that said, hey, you should start a Patreon. So we, we did it. And I've had like a steady group of Patreon supporters throughout this entire run of doing things. And Bella, just for your understanding, Patreon is people that give money on a monthly basis just to say, hey, keep going, do your thing. And some of them get like stickers. Some of them get books. Some of them just give like a dollar to say I'm praying for you. Some of them give like $3. So that's a Patreon. That's what we're doing. Um, and so we have one patron, Patreon person, whatever, um, that has been, uh, sponsoring our entire booth fee. Um, so with the, what he's given, this is, his name's Jason's correct field. And, um, we had a little banner on our, our little flat uh, table tent. I don't know what you call it. We had a little thing on our table that actually said this booth was sponsored by Jason Crutchfield, Patreon supporter. Um, he's actually covered our booth fees for this show and galaxy con Richmond. Um, where, um, it, it takes a lot of the financial pressure off of, you know, is this like actually hurting our family if we have a bad weekend or, you know, even if we sell a lot of stuff, sometimes it still doesn't cover the cost of booth fees and travel and everything else. So that's, that's just really neat. So I want to say thank you to Jason who sponsored this booth this weekend, but also the rest of our Patreon supporters, Mike Perna, Todd Turner, John Jacobs, Zach Harris, Caleb Grimm, Jeanette Skaggs, Chris Poirier, Jason Bullock, Christina Ray, Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Rebecca Godlove, Adam Davis, and Stephanie Schwann. Thank you all so much for your continued support and giving, and we, we just really appreciate you. Um, and I got to do some really cool ministry and to have some really great conversations and to be, you know, as talking with some of the folks, to be some salt and light. Um, in a place that, you know, otherwise didn't have it represented. Um, there were some parents that were just, ri you know, we always say that uh, Faith and Fandom is every parent's favorite booth at a con um, for some of them. Because there's some parents that just really are excited to see us. And I met some parents who really did feel that way, that we were their favorite booth this weekend. So we're grateful for that. So all of our Patreon supporters, thank you. Um, if you're interested in being a Patreon supporter, you can head over to faithandfandom.com or no, to patreon.com slash faithandfandom. Um, but yeah, just to let you know, uh, Galaxy Con Richmond is going to be our next con and book eight is in our editor's hands and being worked on and hoping to have that out uh, May-ish. So thank y'all so much for listening. Galaxy or uh, Captain's Comic Expo was a wonderful event and hope you enjoyed listening. And if you're in the Charleston area next go round, you should definitely check them out. Any last words, Bill? Bye. Bye.